Hey, hello, Swisher Goons. My name is Alex. Wow. It's been a minute since I did this kind of video, huh? But I just want to take a moment to apologize for my negligence and sloppiness in the series of videos that gave the channel a jump start. The Pokemon What If Playlist. I might not be continuing that series, but I still love how this mini-series helped give this channel legs to stand on. Now, I was told in the comments of two particular videos that I uploaded the same thing twice. And in a lot of respects, I did. I also got a lot of information wrong, so out of respect, I'm fixing the mistakes I made. Even though it's like two years too late. So consider this video as not only an addendum to those two videos, but also a more concise version of both videos. Since... You know, I think I confuse a lot of people. I have a very bad habit of doing that. So, let's refresh some old ground before moving forward, shall we? Unova was what most people would call Ash's lowest point as a trainer. The only one that was worse was Kanto, due to Ash being a rookie at the time. Last time I mentioned what I thought was wrong with the series, including Ash's regression as a character, the amount of Pokemon he caught in this region, the, the traveling companions, and the rivals. But let's just get into the meat and potatoes for the video, Ash's team. Everything else can be left to someone more qualified than I am. Now then, the Pokemon Ash caught in the region are Snivy, Tepig, which evolved into Pignite, Oshawott, Padove, who fully evolved into Unpheasant, Raganrola, which evolved into Bulldore, Palpitoad, Swaddle, who became a Levani, Crocorock, who evolved into Crocodile, and a Scraggy that hatched from an egg. Including Pikachu, that's 10 Pokemon in total, most of whom were in constant rotation. You're just asking for an unbalanced team like that. Kanto also had this issue, but at least Ash kept a constant roster back then. To be fair, he didn't have many Pokemon at the time, but he rarely, if ever, brings his old Mons back for battle moving forward. That being said, it's time to trim down the team. Now. Ash's team can go one of two ways, depending if one Pokemon comes with him to Unova. So, we'll just start with the universal changes. And these changes also lead into the first addendum I want to mention, the win to loss ratios. First, I wanted to mention Bulldor. It had four wins under its belt, one of those being a clutch victory against Clay. However, two of those matches were before Ash caught it and lost to one of the same Pokemon. He also technically lost to five other Pokemon. Clay, by and large, was the most notable victory he has. That's why I wanted to exclude him. As for Palpatode, he has three wins, including Elisa Zipstrika, which was a beast, three losses, one of which being Oshawa and another being Elisa's Amolga, and drawing against another friendly rival. Again, he has a memorable win under his belt, but none of the others were really impressive or ended in a draw. I hope that clears up why these two, despite being fan favorites, are cut from the team. This next Pokemon leads into our second addendum, Unpheasant. Unpheasant was one of two girls that Ash caught in Unova. Technically, the first girl Pokemon Ash caught was Bailey from Johto. However, for Unova specifically, Unpheasant was the first girl Ash caught. I hope that clears it up. Now, while Unpheasant has a couple of noticeable victories, those being against better birds, I honestly only remember one, and it's the same thing every fan does. If you love Unpheasant, that's fine, but Ash deserves something better as a follow-up to his best flyer. Next up is Levani, the second grass type Ash caught in Unova. Honestly, while he did have a nice personality and battle style, he participated in fewer battles than Snivy. Additionally, Snivy was already a competent battler. Sorry, bud. You can go to the new travel companion if you want. Scraggy is also being cut from the roster simply due to him not participating in many matches. And if he didn't hatch from an egg, Ash probably would never catch it. Alright, 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 one final cut. And this one came after I realized something. I eventually need to write this adventure. At some point, there's gonna be new main cast members. 
So I made the executive decision to forego Tepig and give him to Ash's traveling companion. I still stand by what I said about Pokemon abandoned by their old trainers being a formula that works, but time can change a person's perspective. Ash doesn't always need this kind of Pokemon, but it can work if you don't have any other ideas. Okay, time to get into the new teams for real this time. First up, I want to talk about the starters Ash is getting in this region. And no better place to start with than the Sass Master herself, Snivy. Snivy's story about leaving weak trainers I think is fine, and is a twist on Pokemon being separated from their trainers. However, she's not staying as Snivy forever. My reasoning for this is that for Snivy to realize she made a good choice in trainers, her evolution is meant to be her true potential. Also, Snivy has a rivalry with Trip Superior, and it'd be poetic justice for Trip to lose to the same Pokemon he chose. I'm picturing Snivy would evolve into Servine at the same time Swaddle did in the anime. As for when she evolved again, I'm thinking against a Team Rocket attack, but don't ask for specific time frames, please. While we're on the topic of starters, let's address the new age Piplup, Oshawott. Okay, this guy was mostly a coward, but jumped into fights when the chips were down. That part kinda needs to go. I'm sorry, I get people like this. I don't. He is not Piplup. You should not have given them his personality! Additionally, when Oshawott learned Aqua Jet, he did it blindly. This irritated me because he's a water type. He shouldn't have any issue with that. And if you want to know what I meant by him being the New Age Piplup, he's a hopeless romantic and the stance he takes when he pops outside of the ball are clear indicators of this. Like seriously, you couldn't be any more on the nose with that. So, this leads into a plotline I made for Ash's Totodile back in Johto, where he grows out of his childish nature and into a more mature combatant. Exactly how he does this depends on the version of the team that you go with. For the black team, Ash loses the clay and Servine berates Oshawott, causing the younger Pokemon to run away crying. While alone, Oshawott tries to train so he can prove himself, but he's too angry and frustrated. Ash then gets an idea to send Servine back to Oak's lab to learn some compassion. In exchange, Ash received Weasel to not only have some fan service, but also to help Oshawott master his abilities. Weasel would drill into Oshawott that when in battle, when Ash calls on him, he needs to give everything he has and more. After a couple of days, Oshawott learns to not only see underwater, but also master Aqua Jet and earns Weasel's respect. From there, a rematch with Clay occurs and Oshawott is Ash's last Pokemon to face Clay's Excadrill. When the two clash with Razor Shell and Rock Smash, Oshawott evolves into Duwat. For the white team, Oshawott still goes through the same arc, but Ash wins with a Pokemon we'll talk about later. Weasel is still a mentor figure, but instead of proving himself during a match, he protects his team from a Team Galactic attack or something like that. It doesn't matter which one, the end goal is still the same. Now for some new blood. To replace Tepig on the team, we have Darumaka. I don't really have any special story reason why Ash could catch one. It could just be a Pokemon that took a liking to him while going through the desert resort or something. Maybe it could have been one of those two Daramaka who were looking after a Zenmo Darmanitan. Speaking of which, when Daramaka should evolve is pretty obvious. The gym battle with Bryson. I'm picturing a storyline where he's trying to learn Fire Punch, and that is where he finally perfects the move. Nothing too special, but it does set him apart from Ash's other fire types at the time. No abandonment issues. Now for the last new guy. We're taking the daycare egg episode, but the egg is a rufflet egg. It makes about as much sense as a scraggy egg in the daycare anyway. So, rufflet would try to explore since everything is so new to him, but this would often land him into fights and annoying other people. Ash and Snivy would keep him on a very short leash, I can tell you that. But when he does fight, Rufflet proves he's more than capable of holding his own. This eventually culminates in a gym battle with Skyla, whom Ash and Rufflet aren't so happy about this time around. Rufflet wants to prove Skyla wrong by taking on her birds, and Ash wants to prove Skyla's way of battling is stupid. 
which if you've seen the anime, you know it is. The final battle with Swana is where Rufflet evolves and spreads his wings as a braviary. It can even learn moves like Brave Bird, Close Combat, or even Hone Claws if Ash wants to pump up the attack power and accuracy. I know one pheasant has a fair amount of fans out there, but she didn't do Ash any favors in the long run. Now then, all members I talked about thus far are universal for both versions of the team. The Pokemon I'll talk about next is only found on the black team. That being Crocodile. I don't see a reason to change his story at all, because for this region, he was Ash's ace in the hole, like Charizard for Kanto, Sceptile for Hoenn, or Infernape for Sinnoh. A massively powerful mon with access to dragon moves and coverage in Aerial Ace and Stone Edge. This slick desert croc is an absolute unit. It feels criminal to not keep this on Ash's team. However, this leads to a damn if you do, damn if you don't sort of thing. See, I, like a lot of people, am bringing back Gibble for this version of the team. Many people have a problem with Gibble from the Sinnoh anime because Ash caught the little guy way too late at the time. It was close to the end of the league, meaning there wasn't too many chances to battle. Unova would have been a prime opportunity for Gibble to come back and show what he could really do. Maybe Gibble can sneak on board with Ash, and when he touches down in Unova, Gibble can chomp on his head to know it's him. From there, Ash already has three Pokemon to use in the first gym. Maybe he can be shown slowly perfecting Draco Meteor as the series goes on, and evolve into Gabite during Elise's gym. He'll remain a Gabite for the majority of Unova, mainly due to Ash taking type advantage. Now, close to the end of the region, Gabite can have his pride as a dragon Pokemon broken and lose his fighting spirit for a while. Think of Sceptile not being able to use his attacks in the battle frontier. Now, who would do such a thing? Why, it's Iris, of course. I'm picturing her being more disciplined with being a dragon master, learning how to battle from Drayden himself. And as a result, she can be even more annoying than the actual show. Speaking of Drayden, though, he does offer Ash and Gabite some comfort and instructs them to build themselves back from scratch. Gabite is still wary from battling, but thanks to his friends, Gabite manages to overcome his fear. He still has relapses when he encounters other dragon Pokemon, just seeing the Pokemon that defeated him is enough. Eventually, this culminates in the Unival League, when he battles a high dragon, where Ash is down to him and Pikachu. When Gabite clashes with the High Dragon, he sees Ash is desperate. This and a stream of good memories mend his fighting spirit, and he evolves into Garchomp. As a Garchomp, he manages to deal serious damage to the pseudo-legendary with Dragon Claw, and pulls off a perfect Draco Meteor as a dramatic finish. He also shows his increased power with an earthquake that shakes the entire stadium. Unfortunately, Garchomp loses to a surprise Ice Beam attack. Pretty commendable, but still needs some work. It should be noted that with both teams, Ash becomes part of the top four. This signifies he hasn't lost his touch instead of the idiotic writing that the show gave us. And for those curious, yes, Charizard comes back to stay and shows himself off to Ash's Unova friends. Fun times though he doesn't really get to do much of anything, because, you know, gotta put more emphasis on the Unova stars. And that'll just about do it for the Unova teams. I hope this addendum fixes any mistakes I had with the other two and clearly gets across what I was trying to do. Also, for those who think that I'm just backtracking, I, I don't know what to tell you, okay? Like... I was just thinking about some things and they just happened, okay? Regardless, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, let me know in the comments which version of Ash's team you prefer, and above all, subscribe for more content. The next milestone we'll be celebrating is 500 subscribers, and if possible, I'd like to hit that by June. Come on guys, I have faith we can do it. Until next time, Celestial Goons, remember, reach for the stars.